Well, good evening. Um, I was watching a, a video on YouTube and I had seen this done in real life. So I knew exactly uh, what I'm talking about. It was several years ago that I worked for a local funeral director. And I got to see everything. I bring back memories of, I went to a, a shooting and went and picked up the young boy. And I remember, I think it was on like a Friday night maybe. And it was so... Uh, early in the evening that nobody was there for me to take him to the medical examiner's office. And I had to drive the van home with me. And the young boy was inside the van. And early that morning I got up and I went to Gainesville I'll never forget the the scene that was there. I'd never been there before. I remember the the gurney. I didn't really know how to operate that well. I had to get the security guard to unlock the door where I could take him and roll him through. And that was an experience because I didn't have no help. I didn't know where the sheets was. I didn't know where anything was. I remember the security guard laughing at me because he knew that I didn't know anything. And then I guess it was Monday. The funeral director got a call complaining that I had scarred up the floor with the gurney that I had marked the floor with the wheels of the gurney. Well, when you go to a place like that and you have to unload a person and you've never done it before and you didn't have no help from the security guard, I guess things like that's going to happen. I'll never forget going back there to retrieve him and I have vivid memories of going in that place on a Monday morning and I will never forget the things that I saw that was laid out in front of me it looked like honestly it looked like a slaughterhouse I mean, it looked like a slaughterhouse. And uh, I went in and got the boy, and they helped me load him and put him back in the van to bring him back here. And uh, I'll never forget some of the things that I learned that I got to see happen. Um, I remember one thing I do remember about that, that day is they put the items that the boy was wearing in a bag and it had his wrist, wrist watch and you could sort of tell that he had wore that wrist watch a lot because they took it off and they put it in the bag, but you could tell where the sun had blistered his hand, but it didn't blister where the wristwatch was. And they asked me, the family, if the wristwatch was available. And I had looked 
in the bag of the items. And sure enough, it was there. I had to wash it off, obviously, a little bit. But I was able to put that wristwatch back on him. I remember today where he's buried. I got the witness helping to make him prepared to be ready for his final uh, day. Um, I've got so many memories of working in that place. And there was one thing that on his casket that the family had picked out, it had one of them um, uh, memory um uh, tubes is what they call it. Usually the undertakers don't worry nothing about it unless unless the family requests it. And um, this memory tube was probably about the size of my pen right here. It was hollow on the inside. And on the inside, it had a, a pre-folded piece of paper. And that pre-folded piece of paper was the information that that family wanted to be put on that paper. And where that thing goes, it's inserted into the casket on the liner of the casket on the end where the lock is on one side, the other side is this memory tube. It's like a time capsule is really what it is. And it's designed to screw into the metal of the lid of the casket and you tighten it down and that stays with that casket. Now there's a reason for that capsule is in the event that tragedy would happen and the casket would be exhumed or Mother Nature would exhume it due to flooding and things of this nature, that <coughs> that tube would be in there and seemed like I remember filling that out on some of the things that they wanted on there. And I seemed like I remember working on that. I don't remember all that I put on there. I'm sure that it was his name and his age and his um, information of his father and mother and sisters and things of this nature, things that would be not important to nobody else, but it was be important to the family. And we filled that out and um, we rolled it up, rolled it real tight and we stuck it in there and I screwed it into the end of the casket. And that little memory tube is still there to this day, as far as I know, anyway. I watched him be buried into the ground. I watched the lid come over that body that was laying there in that area. I could probably go back and find that little tiny small cemetery. Uh, I might could even maybe even remember his name, but I don't remember his name. But that memory plug is still in the end of that casket. And when I saw that, I knew what it was. I, I didn't have to watch the rest of the video to find out what it was. But I knew the reason for it. And I started thinking to myself, what would be our memory in the event that we was to lose this life and go into eternity, what would be left here is our memory. What would be left here is a memory. Um, 
on behalf of myself, I guess I would be known for my occupation for 30 years. Um, who I was, I would hope and pray that I would be known for my relationship with the Lord. I don't know how much that would affect people that would be away from me or or real close to me. I'm sure it would affect my family for the most part. But far as anyone else, I really don't know of any value other than the fact that, oh yeah, I remember, I remember Kenny. I remember Kenny making videos. I remember seeing Kenny's videos now and then. And no doubt some would even ask questions of what happened to Kenny. And maybe, just maybe, there might even be a memory marker put in my casket. I don't know. If it's not mentioned and they don't know anything about it, it probably won't. But that memory of me would still be with the ones that know me. And I guess the reason I'm even taking 10 minutes to tell this story is I would like to know that my relationship with the Lord was as good as possible. Now, you know, some people's going to go and say, well, Kenny, you mighty prideful, and you think you're all that close to the Lord. No, I, I, I don't think I'm close. I think that I, I have to be just totally straight up and honest. I feel... Like I'm honored to be living in a different life, a different lifestyle, a different uh, opportunity to live. Um, I, I feel like I'm honored that God would love me enough to save me. That God would love me enough to allow me to, to desire to want to come out here and to make a video about stuff that we just talked about that don't really have nothing to do with the Lord on the guy that I helped assist to put in the ground. But I have that memory. And the question that I would ask today is, do you have the memory of that relationship with Jesus? And when that relationship with Jesus come into you, I remember when it come into me. I remember how old I was when it came into me. I was about 47 years old. I had been to church for years and years. I thought that I was actually saved years before that. But I never had no real assurance of that. And it got to the point where I literally was fretful because I did not know and I got so tired of not knowing that I wanted the memory of knowing that I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ I wanted to make that evident not so much to the world but to myself and to the Lord himself I wanted to be honest with him more than anybody. Because being honest with him is what gives me peace of mind today that the verse that I'm going to read that I have read before means as much as it means to me because I'm not promised tomorrow. It was a couple of days ago that the photo of my plot had came up on Facebook from a memory of a year ago. I had took a picture of the grassy area. 
I'm sure that it maybe would look different today if I went back today and took that picture over again. I don't know that it would look the same, obviously. It might not. But that grassy area has not been disturbed. Now, at one time, it was disturbed to put my vault there. My vault is already under the ground, and it's already covered over with the dirt. All they have to do is take the backhoe and move the dirt from the top of the lid, do some shovel work, get the edge of the lip of the vault lid off enough to get the dirt off so that they can lift the, the, the seal of that vault lid in order to move it out of the way in order for there to be a setup that would help put me in the ground. I'm glad that I had the memory that I came to the Lord when I did. Now, I had the memory of that boy, but I also had the memory of asking Jesus in my heart. Now, the scripture that I'm going to read tonight is found in Hebrews chapter 9 in verse 27. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Disappointed. Now, I hope that that appointment is canceled because I'm looking for the rapture of the church. So therefore, I won't need to have that area of plot of ground to take in my body. I hope that that dirt stays where it is. But see, we're not promised tomorrow. It says here, and it is appointed, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. I died when I was about 47 years old. I lost the life that I had that was not sure about my salvation. I lost that life back then years ago. Am I still living in my natural life today? Yes, it's obvious I'm living in my natural life. But I lost my natural life to pick up my spiritual life. I now have a spiritual life in Christ. Thank God. That's not bragging people. That's just telling you the truth. I've got a memory of making sure that my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just like I've got a memory of that, of that vault having that boy's information put on the end of that casket. And why I'm taking all this time to mention that, I guess it was just a memory of mine that I remember picking him up. I remember bringing him back. I remember to help dressing. I helped in every fashion of that boy's service. I know where he's laying at. I hope that he knew the Lord. But I don't know. At that time, I don't even know if I was at that time. But I'm grateful and thankful to God that he loved me enough to give me a memory that supersedes that memory that goes in that casket. It goes on to say in the next verse, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. You know what that means? He only had to go to the cross one time. Many want to crucify him over and over and over again. Many wants to crucify him over and over because, well, if, if I sin today, that means the blood of Jesus didn't pay for my sin today. Oh, yes, it did. It paid for sin past, present, and future. 
It paid for sin one time because it says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now he bore the sins of every human being, but not every human being is going to recognize Jesus as the Christ. But it says that he offered to bear the sins of many and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. It's talking about those that will look for him. I made a memory years ago that I could anticipate looking for him. And I would hope that y'all have done the same thing, that y'all have made sure that salvation is in order. Because it says here, for those that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin. Meaning he ain't going to come back with the nails in his hands or the nails in his feet. He's not going to come back and wear the crown of thorns. He's not going to come back in a suffering, humiliating way. He's coming back in the clouds of glory and he's going to call up the dead, the ones that know him. I would pray that that young boy knew the Lord, but I don't know that. But if he knew the Lord, the Lord's going to take him up out of that casket where he's laying at right now. So see, I have hope today that I can look for him. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? See, he he's bringing salvation when he comes, but he wants us to have that salvation before he comes. He is the Christ of salvation when he does come. He sure is. He's coming for people that has already been born again and already saved. Do you have that memory? Your casket might end up having one of them memory tubes in it. And it might not be taking the time to fill it out. But it's got the memory tube. If your family decides to buy one of them, it has a tube. But the likelihood is you're not going to know nothing about it because the funeral director is not going to say nothing unless they are asked about it. And obviously they will do everything they can to please the family in whatever way they can. I'm telling you today what my advice to you today is. Make sure you're ready before that day comes. That boy didn't know he was going to die. That boy had no clue he was going to die when he did. It was sudden and to the point. And I'm sure that he didn't suffer very much. Elderly Ministry is the website. This is YouTube. You can reach me on YouTube. If you decide you want to talk, please call. Please call. Go ahead and call me. Leave me a message, and I will return that call, I promise you. Thank you all for watching.